Andy's been looking at the papers this week, not necessarily reading them, just looking at them. I've been working in this same office for 30 years now, if you can call this work. We get eight newspapers every day, and I keep them where they're easy to get at. We get the New York Times, the Daily News, the New York Post, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Newsday, and the New York Observer. I don't read all of them, I just get them. We figured it would take anyone a couple of days to read just one edition of the New York Times, so if you read all of it, you'd get behind every day when another paper came before you'd finish the one that came the day before. Reading the paper every morning is one of the high points of my day, and I'm worried. I don't like to say so, but some papers have gone out of business, and more papers are going to go out of business. I don't think saying so is going to make them go any faster. You may know me from television, but I write a newspaper column for the Tribune Media Syndicate, and my relationship to newspapers goes back to before there was television, when I was 12 years old. I loved newspapers then, and I love them now. I used to deliver 27 newspapers near our house in Albany. Each paper cost the customer a nickel a day, and I got a nickel a week for each of them from the distributor. So I was making a dollar thirty-five a week. Not bad. I don't want CBS to hear this because they'd probably think that was about right. Three of us, Alfie Gordon, Bobby Reedy, and I, saved what we made delivering newspapers and shoveling snow or raking leaves and went to the movies every Saturday. We always sat in the same seats. Every theater had an organist who played before the movie began. I wish they'd bring back the organ, Buck Rogers, Lorna Doone, and Double Features. I'd start going to the movies again, after I read the newspaper. I'm Steve Croft. We'll be back next week with another edition of 60 Minutes.